everyone and welcome to worship here uh, on this Sunday after Thanksgiving. I don't know about you but it has taken me two full days to recover from all the food that I ate a few days ago. Uh, I ate lots and lots of turkey and mashed potatoes because we cooked food for 20 people. 
We only had four people in our home this year because we were trying to keep our gathering small. Uh, and so you may be wondering why we cooked food for 20 people. Well, that's the way we've always done it. So sometimes you have to make sacrifices and eat all that food just by yourself. I also had to eat four leftover pies because Isaac was a little worried all those calories would go straight to his thighs. Again, small sacrifices dads have to make for the good of everybody else. I hope you fared better this Thanksgiving than I did. I hope you also realize that this isn't just the Sunday after Thanksgiving, but the first Sunday of Advent where we prepare our hearts and minds for the good news of Jesus' birthday that's just around the corner. And this season, we pull out all the stops at Benji, we decorate the sanctuary with these beautiful trees and even a nativity and the blue pyramids that you can just make out on your screen. And we do this as our way of slowing down and brightening up the world as we wait for that good news of Christmas. Speaking of which, we're providing, again, some opportunities for you to brighten up the world by sharing the light of Jesus' love. Uh, we invite you to donate to our Light of Christmas Fund this season so that we can bring a little joy and love to some families in need this season. Look for more information uh, in your weekly bulletin. We also hope that you can see in that weekly uh, a little information about Christmas Eve in the coming weeks. Uh, we are trying to make some plans, and we know that everything is a little in flux now, but we hope to make that a meaningful celebration as well. Uh, this season is going to look a little bit differently, and we know that for many, many years, this has been a beautiful sanctuary for us to worship in, and it's a little bit sad that we can't be here in this beautiful space, as gorgeous as it looks today. Uh, but we thought we would bring this into your home, and remember that during this season, we have a God who tells us that he is with us, our Emmanuel. And wherever we are, in a sanctuary or in our own homes, God is present with us there. Today we begin our series of Advent on a theme called, What Are You Waiting For? And we're going to hear a message uh, from Vicar Kate today about God's love and loving all. And we hope that as you hear these words and you hear our gospel story about the word becoming flesh and living among us, that you remember to take a pause to remember the God who is with you. And we hope that during this season you're able to slow down and remember what it is you are waiting for this Christmas season, this Advent season, as we all prepare to make room for Jesus in our lives. The good news is that no matter whether we make room, Jesus will show up anyway and bring his love and grace into this world once again this year. All right, I've been doing enough talking. I probably need to go take a Pepto-Bismol to recover still from all that Thanksgiving food. But let's begin our worship with a confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Gracious God, you came into the world for all people, and yet we sometimes find it hard to care for those around us. You came to transform the world, and still there are days when we worry that changes this transformation might bring. You came with an everlasting promise of grace, but sometimes we treat your birth like a piece of ancient history rather than the bold declaration of a living God. Forgive us, Lord. When, when we, we struggle to love, when we struggle to trust, when we struggle to hope. Now hear the good news. Christ came into this world not because it was perfect, but because it wasn't. Christ came into our broken world to make it whole. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are enough just as you are. May you trust this promise and be a shining light in the world. Amen. Amen.
Sunday of Advent, the word Advent simply means a coming into being. And in the church, it is a time when we watch and wait in anticipation of the coming Christ, which we remember each year at Christmas. Tonight we light the first candle. The candle of love. In the Gospel of John, we are reminded that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believed in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. As we light the candle of love and build the light this Advent season, may we share God's love with the world. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Renewing God, in the beginning you gave us all things life, and each and every day you give us life, you gave us new life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Bye. Shine through us and help us to do what we can to share your light and love with all things around us. Amen. Amen. Well, hey kids, how are you guys today? I'm just over here kind of putting the finishing touches on our nativity scene as Advent has started. Got to get the donkeys up and, and everybody else in their place. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts about Advent is getting all of this stuff set up and the decorations as we wait for Christmas. You know, it's interesting here looking at the shepherds. Uh, there's a cute little shepherd here holding this even cuter baby lamb. We'll put him right over there, by the way. It's interesting. I wonder what it would be like to, to be a shepherd or to, to be Mary or to be some of the people here that we see in the nativity scene every year. What would that first Christmas have been like? You know, right now in Advent, we're getting ready for Christmas. We're making our preparations and, and we're waiting. We're waiting for Christmas. Sometimes I wonder what they were waiting for. I wonder what it was like to wait for the first Christmas when they didn't even know uh, what that story was like. Sure, they had been promised that God was sending a Messiah, but they really didn't know what, what Jesus was going to be like. And we have the benefit of knowing that now. But I wonder what it would be like if we were able to go back and to talk to them, to talk to Mary, to talk to uh, Joseph or the Magi, to talk to the shepherds and ask them, what are you waiting for? Let's find out. Well, hey, my name's my name's Ben. I've uh, I'm a shepherd. I've, I've been a shepherd for a long time, uh, quite a few years. My my daddy was a shepherd, and I just kind of took over when I was a kid. You know, the the sheep aren't going to shepherd themselves, so yeah, we're out here here every day. And uh, it's a hard job, but, uh, but it's meaningful. Uh, I like to be outside and to do things with my hands, so it, it, it works out. I gotta say though, I've uh, never seen a shepherd that looks like this. Uh, never seen a shepherd that clean before. I know for sure that I've never really been that clean before. Uh, probably been about two, three months since my last bath. You lose track. Uh, people say I smell like a sheep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, after you've gone a couple, a uh, couple weeks without a bath, it, you just kind of get used to it, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that what y'all are looking for? What, what, what else do you need here? What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Be nice if life was just a little bit easier, I think. I think that's what I'm waiting for. You know, God, God promised to send, uh, to send the Messiah. And, and I imagine that that Messiah would make life just a little bit easier for us, you know. I, I'm willing to, you know, to, to work hard and 
Um, you know, we're not important people out here in Bethlehem. Uh, we're not the big city folk, but, uh, you know, again, God promised to show up with us. God promised that the Messiah would come to us right here in, in Bethlehem. So, you know, every night I'm out there with the sheep and some nights I, I just gaze up into the stars and, and ask God, you know, how long? I've been, I've been waiting. You know, we've been waiting a long time just, just for a Messiah to come that might make our life just a little bit easier and uh, to know that God was with us. You know, it's okay that it's hard be nice if it was a little easier, but just to know that God is with us when it gets hard. I think that's what all the shepherds uh, would really be looking for. You know, when I talk to Bob and and uh, Ralph from down the street, when we meet sometimes, uh, you know, we're, we're all waiting for that Messiah. That's what we're waiting for. Waiting for, for God to come and to keep God's promise and for God to let us simple shepherd folk know that, that God's with us and... Uh, that God loves and cares about us. That's, that's what I'm waiting for. an array of light surrounded by trumpet-wielding angels. Instead, our Lord came quiet and simple, as a baby to a family who didn't have a lot, let alone what the Son of God deserves. He came to the earth poor to reach the poor. He came quiet and forgotten to be able to minister to the forgotten. If this Christmas season we adopt that mentality and put ourselves in the shoes of those in need, we join Christ in his mission that he took on the day that he was born. Purchase one less gift in return for one unbelievable present in the name of Christ. In everything you do this Christmas season, love all and be a part of the Advent Conspiracy. Good morning. I hope that you all had good and safe Thanksgiving celebrations this past week. And if you didn't catch it during the candle lighting or from Shepherd Ben during the children's sermon earlier, I hope that you heard it uh, just now on the quick video we just saw. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. The video you saw came from an organization called Advent Conspiracy, um, and we'll be using some of their videos and materials over the next four weeks. Uh, you can learn more about them and find some Advent devotionals and home resources if you'd like um, at their website, adventconspiracy.com. And our scripture reading on this first Sunday of Advent comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Here are the good news. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So, uh, in my family growing up, this weekend, the Friday and Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving, always meant one thing. And that was that we could finally start listening to Christmas music. When my family would road, to, road trip to my relative's house for Thanksgiving, we would always bring two CD travel cases, just about this big. Do you remember those? This was after cassette tapes, but before iPhones and Spotify. And one of the travel cases that we traveled with was full of our regular, year-round CDs that we would play on the way down to Thanksgiving. And then the other case would be full of the Christmas CDs that we would play the whole way back. This past week, just here in Wilmer, um, I noticed Christmas lights started appearing on the houses around my neighborhoods. And I started to see lit Christmas trees peeking through the front windows of houses around town when I go on walks in the evening. All this to say that now that Thanksgiving is over, it seems like Christmas is right on its heels. But I am sure that all of you good churchgoers know better than that. That we can't be in the Christmas season yet because, as we have said already a number of times today, we are just starting the first day of Advent. Advent, the season of waiting, preparation, anticipation, and hopeful expectation of Christmas Day. Waiting for the coming of Christ. And so, for these next four weeks, as the Christmas season fills stores and streets around us, for these next four weeks of this Advent season, we will be asking and returning to the question, in this season of waiting, what are you waiting for? This seems like an easy enough question, right? What are you waiting for? Well, I'm waiting to open my presents on Christmas Day. I'm waiting to see my family. I'm waiting for a paid holiday vacation for some time off of school. I'm waiting to make it through finals week before finishing up the semester. I could go on and on. But in the church, I think this question, what are you waiting for, is a deceptively tricky question because we are waiting for the birth of Christ on Christmas Day, but we already know how that story ends. Mary isn't pregnant anymore, and Christ has already been born, so what are we waiting for? The waiting of the Advent season has meant different things throughout the centuries. No one quite knows when Advent started, probably around the fourth century, but what we do know is that when Advent started, it actually had nothing to do with Christmas Day. Instead, it was a period of preparations for new Christians who were going to be baptized in Epiphany in January. And so for them, this Advent season was a period of prayer and confession and fasting, a period of preparation and waiting before their baptism. It was a few centuries later when the Advent season was linked up with Christmas Day, like we know it today, and the waiting of the Advent season became a waiting for the coming of Christ. But not the coming of the Christ child, the second coming of Christ. Think more along the lines of the book of Revelation than the Gospels. Eventually, Advent came to be known more like how we think of it today, waiting for Christmas Day, celebrating the memory of the birth of Jesus. And even though the tradition of Advent has changed over centuries, what we see in this history, in this rich understanding of what waiting means, is that it isn't just a passive waiting for a, for a day to come and go in the season of Advent. Instead, much like our other Christmas preparations, buying gifts, baking foods, cleaning the house, decorating, decorating the tree, the waiting of Advent is an active waiting. 
And our passage for today, the Gospel of John, is admittedly a funny place to start anticipating the birth of Christ. Because the Gospel of John is the only Gospel that doesn't have a Christmas story. No Mary, no Joseph, no manger. Instead, what we get for a Christmas story is what you heard in the reading for today. The Word became flesh and lived among us. That's it. Merry Christmas, Christ is here. Forget about the Magi, forget about the shepherds. For John, this is all you need to know. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And what immediately follows this in the Gospel of John is Jesus' ministry. We jump right into feeding the hungry, befriending, befriending the outsider, teaching the crowds. The Word became flesh and taught us how to live. We don't celebrate Christmas, Christmas Day because a baby was born. That's called a birthday. <laughs> we celebrate Christmas Day because the baby that was born changed the way that we live. Christ came to be the light and life of all people, John says, so that all people can have life and live in God's abundance. Advent isn't just a season of waiting for Christ to make good on that pro promise. Advent is a season of anticipation and preparation as we continue the work that Christ has taught us. When I was in college, this Sunday, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, was the day each year that we started the week-long dress rehearsal for my college's annual Christmas concert, Christmas at Luther. I know that there are some fellow Luther alums at Vinji, go Norse, and that uh, you Gusties and Olies and Cobbers out there have some uh, Christmas concert traditions of your own too. But on this Sunday, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, even though we had learned the concert music weeks or months in advance, we had four days of long rehearsal to iron out the final details of the concert. And an important part of those final rehearsals was, of course, choreographing the candle lighting of Silent Night. And what I didn't realize until I was participating in my first Christmas at Luther was that even more important than the handing out and the lighting of candles was the highly detailed and overly planned distinguishing of the candles. Everyone got a number, and your number corresponded with a verse in Silent Night, and you could only blow out your candle once it got to your verse. But not everyone at the beginning of the verse because then it looked like we planned it. And not everyone at the end of the verse because then it looked like we planned it. And so slowly, over the course of the song, the room would get darker and darker as these candles were being blown out. Until finally there was just one candle in the middle of the top row. And once everyone's eyes were fixed on that candle, They blow out the last candle. Now, of course, there are good reasons for this. The year before I started at Luther, someone had gotten too embodied with their singing, and as they were swaying, they leaned back into the lit candle behind them, and their hair started on fire. It was quickly patted out by a neighbor. But we were warned the next year that we were this close to losing our fire privileges and switching to battery-powered candles. So I get it. But I've heard of churches who have the tradition of lighting their candles at the Christmas Eve service. And then as they sing Silent Night, despite the fat fire hazards or maybe with their battery-powered candles, they'll walk out into the church parking lot or the streets and sidewalks around them into the neighborhoods that make up their communities with their lights. And I just like the imagery of that. That we are filled up in this space and in this time with the love and light and life of Christ who became flesh and lives among us. A light and love that darkness cannot overcome, cannot apprehend, and we are called out of this space, out of this time together, so that we too can share the light and love of Christ that is the Christmas story with those around us that we too can feed the hungry and befriend the overlooked. This Advent season, may the light of Christ fill you up and shine through you. And in our active waiting, may we prepare and work together 
so that God's love is shared with all people. What are we waiting for? Amen. Please join us in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God with us, our Emmanuel, this Advent season, as we wait with joyful expectation for Christmas, we have a great deal on our hearts and minds. We see the news, we know the heartache in our own lives, and we know the frantic pace of everyday life and worries that can leave us tired and weary. Remind us what we are waiting for this season, the good news of your word made flesh, your light that shines in every darkness, the good news that you are the God who is with us every day. Just a few days removed from Thanksgiving, we give you thanks for the many blessings we have during this holiday season. We thank you for family and friends who share your love with us, even the ones we cannot be with physically. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter, and for all the basic necessities of life that we often take for granted. We thank you for all those who embody your love by working tirelessly to make sure all people have these gifts. Inspire us all to be a part of your word made flesh as we share your love with all those we meet. We pray for all those waiting to hear good news today, those who are homeless, those who are unemployed, those who are hungry, those facing abuse or neglect, those who are sick or grieving. We pray for Mary Nelson, Ray Groff, Nada Carlson, Linda Watman, David Quam, 
Irene Kwan, Bev Falk, Sherry Jeff, and Dan Kohlauer. And we also pray for Ron and Carolyn Norby and their family as they grieve the loss of their daughter-in-law, Betsy, and for the family and friends of Judy Corbel as we all grieve her loss. In this season of hope, help us all to put our trust in your light and your love. Lord, help us to slow down this Advent season and to remember that this season isn't about buying the perfect gifts or about having the prettiest Christmas lights or decorations or even about making sure that we have a picture-perfect Christmas. Remind us that this season is about you and your love for us. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas by setting aside the busyness and the running around and by taking time for one another and for you so that we might experience your love made flesh once again this year. All this we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Sustaining God, you have filled our lives with so many gifts. The gift of family and friends, the gift of hope and love and joy, and the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We can only give back what you have already given to us. Bless the gifts that we give and make them plenty. Bless the lives that we live so that the world may know your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We begin this Advent season knowing that this is a season of waiting, but also a season of love. We come to this table during our Advent waiting to know and to hear once again that God loves us so much that God is sending God's Son to come into our lives. And we are met here at this table by the very real presence of Jesus. As we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please pray with us the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good as you receive the bread. Please know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the wine, please know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. May God bless you in these days of waiting. May God bless you with rest and renewal. May God bless you with space to prepare for what is to come. May God bless you with hope that sustains you in the darkest days and on the coldest nights. And may you live today knowing that Christ is coming. Indeed, Christ is already here, working with us, among us, and within us. Amen. Amen. Christ is with you. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Sleeping.